All right, so let's shift the discussion a little bit to the NRA because that was yeah. the other part of this that during the, the town hall and the subsequent discussions that it got very confused as to what the NRA actually does, what do they want to do, what are the people who uh, don't like them think they do, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so first off, just give me your position on, on the NRA generally. I think the NRA is a fantastic organization that defends the rights, the right to bear arms of individuals. The thing with the NRA is that they really don't have the money influence that people say they do. All they have is the social influence. Republican senators know that the base believes in the values that the NRA promotes and defends. And they understand that. And if they go against the NRA, they're going against their own constituents. The NRA does not have a big budget. They really don't. They, they're not like this like super powerful, like that they directly control senators and congressmen with their money. They control it with their ideals. Mm -hmm. What the NRA does, which is fantastic, is it provides a check from, like, the, from the public, not, not from the government, for defending our right to bear arms. And it's fantastic. You know, it, it helped, I think, with the case with McDonald's versus Chicago that helped bolster uh, Second Amendment rights for individuals. I mean, and the NRA does, does, does a great job. Their NRA ILA program, which is actually the legislative branch on uh, defending the Second Amendment, does a fantastic job. I think right now they're taking a case against raising the age from 18 to 21. There was, right after the shooting, uh, Rick Scott signed into law in Florida raising the age to buy, I think, a firearm a rifle now. So before, before uh, you couldn't buy a handgun if you were under 21, but you could buy a rifle because handguns were used in violent crimes. Mm -hmm. Whether I think that's right or not, that's a separate discussion, but he raised the age from 18 to 21 to buy a rifle, and directly the, the NRA was like, this is unconstitutional. Boom, we put in a lawsuit. Just to address that 18 to, to 21 age, uh, there is absolutely no evidence that raising the age does absolutely does, does anything to, uh, to lower um, gun homicide whatsoever. So what do you think about the certain set of people that think that if we could just have all of the right laws or if we could just manage everything properly that everything would be fine? The thing is... Because it doesn't take into the account thing is, We have behavior. all the laws that we need already on the books. The thing is the enforcement doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So I'll just make a tangent. I'll get back to here. I think it is utterly hypocritical that the left hates Trump and they, that he's in power, but then they're saying we have to trust the government more. So if you think the government, right. if you think Trump is literally Hitler, why are you giving away your right to wear bare arms to this tyrannical government? Mm -hmm. um, what was the question again? <laughs> well, just that there's a certain set of people that think if we just have oh, the yeah. right laws. I got you. So yeah. we already have the, 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 the laws on the books. You know, just the enforcement it, the enforcement is what needs to occur. Like the Lautenberg Amendment means that it says that domestic abusers cannot have a firearm. That's already on the books, it just needs to be enforced. There's the issue with, um, you know, the NICS background check program where they say we need more time to, to evaluate uh, and give you back your background check in order to buy a weapon. The issue is the government doesn't need more time, it just needs more of the records. Mm -hmm. So the reason why the Texas Sutherland shooting occurred was because I think it was some military branch where there was someone who were he, he committed a violation, and by law, they, sh they, he, they should have transferred that over to the database, and therefore he wouldn't have been able to buy a weapon, but the records weren't transferred, he was able to buy a weapon, and he shot up the church. So the government just needs t to get all the records and do their job. Same thing with red flag laws. Um, and people like to talk about this. This is a little bit more of the trickier areas of this, but red flag laws uh, basically say that someone can flag you, and then you get reviewed, and then you can get your gun taken away. Uh, and a lot of people also like, so the issue with red flag gun laws is that it's all about government enforcement, and, and that's, that's, that's the issue. And there's also the big issue where people like to talk about mental health. Mm -hmm. And they say, you know, mentally ill people shouldn't be able to acquire a weapon. So I have talked to countless individuals about this, and I should ask Peterson, but I forgot to. The question is, how do you determine when someone is mentally ill enough and hits the threshold so they cannot have a weapon, and nobody knows? And in addition, the thing with the shooter at my school, looking retroactively, we can say this kid was mentally insane, but I don't know if a court would, would adjudicate that he would actually be mentally insane by, by law, therefore taking his gun away. Yeah, so is the inherent problem here, do you think, that you cannot manage all of these things? You can do the best you can to have some sensible laws around them and defend our right to bear arms and all of that and make sure schools are taken care of, but that generally speaking, yes, there's a sort of sliding scale psychologically, but also that the people that want to do bad 
will find ways to do bad. They're not yes. the ones that are walking out and looking at a building and it says, oh, no guns here. Yes, I'm not going to walk in with a gun. El criminals will act like criminals, no matter what. But the good thing is, is that our laws are working. I mean, I think it's violent crime or ho some rate from the 1990s to 2010 has decreased by 50%. And, and, pub and schools are safer now than they were 20 years ago. Like school shooting rates are declining and homicide rate, gun homicide rates are declining and the homicide rates are declining. So we are becoming a more peaceful nation. And a lot of that has to do with having more gun owners and to having more you know, concealed carry permit owners because those people, when, when there's a shooting, those people are the first responders. I think it's wrong to say that, oh, we'll just let the police arrive after the crime has been committed. No, you need people there immediately to stop the shooter. That's why I'm all for having teachers and armed school officers at schools to immediately take down the shooter. All right, so let, let's shift. I mean, I don't think we're gonna fully get away from guns here, but let's shift a little bit. Okay. What is it like to be a 17-year-old right now that's in the mix of this, that's now a public person? Dude, that's, it's crazy. Yeah, to it's just crazy. be part of this this oddly unique time where it feels like the adults have lost the plot and it's got to be very hard for you to find people that kind of make sense. I think you've been able to find a couple of them. But just to be 17 in this very odd political, cultural time. Yeah, it's insane. <laughs> That's it. It's insane. <laughs> yeah. Like, but what, does it feel unique to you? I know you haven't lived through this before, but like... Th th I don't know how to judge it. Well, yeah. well, all I know is that... I'm an adult now, and I have to act like an adult. Whether, whether I'm 17 or 18, I have commi like commitments that I make, I have to go through with them, and I've just, my maturity, I've like forced to become mature. Like I can no longer play video games and waste time. There's things that I have to do. But I've just been so blessed to find a solid group of people who actually care about me and want the best for me, like, like Ben and Charlie and Guy Benson, people who have just reached out to me and have just selflessly helped me navigate this political minefield. But it's crazy because like all the people that I lo looked up to like two years ago and like would watch their videos, like, not gonna not trying to like boast your ego here, but right. I, used, I, I would watch your show. <laughs> <laughs> Please continue. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's awesome that now I can reach out for their expertise. The thing with me is that I, I always like to start with, look, I don't know anything. And I, I'm always looking to get more information to know more like today. I had a call with, with a gun expert um, on the way here. And it's like, what more can I learn in order to be like fully fluent and, and, and knowledgeable about the subject that I'm talking about? And there are a bunch of stuff that I don't know about and I'm constantly trying to learn. So when you see a guy, and again, I don't like making this about people rather than ideas, but when you see uh, a guy like David Hogg out there and he clearly is taking just the progressive line on this and he seems more to me to be sort of a progressive activist than sort of a, a, a fair arbiter of what's going on here. Um, that's gotta be frustrating for you, that he's so public about this, I suppose. Maybe Somewhat, some, well, that you obviously probably disagree with him on 100% on of the policy parts this of this. This is true. Yeah, I don't wanna make it about the personal parts, but that he's thought of as sort of a media hero and you're kind of the black sheep of, of this group. I mean. Maybe not to the to the Shapiros and me and whoever else. I get I mean, what you're this, saying. Yeah. So here, so here's what I say. There is no issue that kids are on television. The issue is is that when someone is spouting policy, they are they are no longer a child. They are pushing policy, and they should be treated as every adult as such. When you say something outrageous, you should be called out on that. I remember there's a segment with it was on CNN where he, he said something completely outlandish, uh, and there was no blowback. So look, here's what well, I said. Well, I think, was that the line about Marco Rubio wants to kill kids? Or something, or something like that, it was something just that crazy. Yeah. So what I say is when I'm pushing policy and I say things, please like, tell me that I'm saying something stupid and push me back on that. The thing is with me that, look, when I'm on TV, I'm not talking as a child, I'm pushing policy, right? And I expect there to be pushback. I don't think you can say whatever, whatever you want. Like I, and in addition, I think that having debate is great. So like I love I loved going on Piers Morgan and having a debate with him. Mm -hmm. That was great. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to I, I hate this thing where like where where one second you're spouting policy, but then you rush back to the, the shield of oh I'm a child, but we have to take my opinion seriously because the second I say it I'm an adult. Yeah. So just just this isn't this isn't fair. Yeah. And what I saw, I think one of the reasons why 
um, I grew to such publicity was because I was saying the things that adults weren't able to say. Like I was able to say things that Ben Shapiro or you or Charlie Kirk or the right wasn't able to say because I'm a kid. And I don't think that's fair because I think that when you're spouting policy, you are no longer a child, you are an adult. What do you make of what's going on with the right generally? Because you ran the turning point, was that the high school event that I did? Or yes. Gonna, I've done so many of these High school now. leadership summit. You, okay, so you did the high school leadership summit in DC and I, I spoke there, this is a couple months ago, and you had a great lineup of speakers and Peter Thank Thiel you. was there and, and you had big, big time yeah, politicians. We, and, and first off, I mean that was the first time we met and I was like, holy. Yeah, we had a debate kid. about abortion. Yeah, we, right, <laughs> okay, so that's, abortion. That exactly. was great. so that's my point. So first off, you, you, you ran this whole thing. I mean, you're, you're, you're still in high school, right? We're gonna talk a little bit about where you wanna go to college and all that, but you ran an incredible event with major primetime people, and, and it was, it was jam-packed, and it was uh, diverse in terms of ideas. So we get into a private debate about abortion, <laughs> but you brought me there, uh, yeah, you and, were great. and I went up there, thanks, but I, I went up there and I talked about my differences with this group. I talked about... And gay, the kids were respectful. Yeah, and I talked about gay marriage and abortion and death penalty and a couple other things that generally these young conservatives are not for. I think gay marriage, they're pretty much for. I, I yeah, sense that, yeah. that the ship has sailed on that one. Actually, I'm pretty sure I got a huge ovation on that Yeah, line. I think you did. Um, but it is just clear to me that there has been a realignment on the right where there is exactly what you're talking so about here, a respect ideas. That, yeah. Can we just say that Lindsey Graham 2.0 is fantastic? No, the guy, it's unbelievable. That, I mean, just that one, <laughs> the, the thing with the tie the Benny's other day. Benny's great. Yeah, yeah, Benny's doing so great So here's work. the thing, I Benny think the Johnson right is it. He's finally, a daily caller, right? Yes, yeah. so I think the right is finally realizing that youth, um, and, like energizing the youth and instilling the next like future of conservative leaders is extremely important. And we saw that with the High School Leadership Summit. We had some of the biggest name speakers. We had like Nikki Haley, we had Betsy DeVos, we had like uh, attorney Jeff Sessions, uh, we had so many people. Um, and every, and we, we had Mark Meadows, we had Steve Scalise, we had, we had, we had Prager, we had you. <laughs> um, and it was just, it was fantastic to see the right just understand that these are the leaders of tomorrow. Let's inform them. But in addition, Turning Point is such a great organization. It's free speech, free markets, and, and capitalism. Those are the three legs. Uh, and what we saw with Turning Point is such a, it's such a great organization because we, were, we brought people who I have disagreements with to speak there. Mark Cuban spoke, got a couple standing ovations, had a debate with Charlie, mm -hmm. and people loved it. So we're all open having free discussion and debate. Like, we're, we're, we're working on Sasser Student Action Summit, December 19th, 22nd, shameless yep. plug. Yeah, yeah, I think I'll um, be there. And we're, we're looking, like, how can we get the most diverse group of people to speak. Like I'm thinking about some people from the intellectual dark web to speak there. I think yeah. it's great if we can get Alan Dershowitz, just how can we get diversity of thought? So why is it that this new right, or whatever you wanna call it, young conservative group, whatever it is, why is it that you guys are able to do this? And I see virtually none of this on your counterparts on the left. That's not true. I mean, the left has organized and mobilized the youth. Just right now, we are in Well, I mean, no, 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 but I'm talking about diversity of thought. Like, where are they because bringing they're, in they're people so that they even mildly disagree with? I'm not talking about scary conservatives. I'm talking about old school liberals. Where, where are they inviting them to just have an interesting conversation? The left is so dead set on political correctness and saying everything to not offend anyone with the slightest micro, micro, micro aggression that it's just, you can't live in that world. And, and tall, like, logical liberals, like yourself, are moving to the right because <laughs> I like these, of that. these subtle little injections <laughs> of pleasantry. Yeah, it's nice. Are moving people to the right, and conservatives are like, come here, my refugees, my political refugees, we're embracing you. Yeah, so okay, so when I hear people will say, Ruben, the conservatives are just using you. You go to Turning Point, they're just using you. You're not just using me, Kyle. No. I mean, yeah, but no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, I mean, what I've seen is intellectual flexibility yeah. there, and it's even when I've had Ben in here and we've t done this conversation repeatedly about, now about gay marriage, I just firmly believe that as time goes on, I can shift him. I, there's something that's sort of insulting about it to me when people say that to me because I'm confident, I'm confident enough in, in my thoughts. I think he's gonna take you on abortion. I really think that like in a few years, you'll be with us on abortion. May, maybe, that's but okay. you know what? That would be a trade-off, right? Like if, if, if ultimately, I always describe myself as begrudgingly No, I think Ben's interpretation was, of, of homosexuality, while I don't, I don't, I don't have a, like a strong opinion on it because I haven't thought about it enough, 
by his religious standpoint, it makes sense. But from the government standpoint, it also makes total sense. Well, that's why I'm completely fine with him. It's like, you want to have your religious view. I have to respect that. But if you were trying to legislate my life, no, now absolutely, I have a problem. Yeah. The and great thing with the right is that we're open to just diversity of thought. Just say whatever you want. Let's talk about it and let's get to the right rational viewpoint. Like I've, I've always been about debate because it brings people, it, it's all about logic and it brings people to the right end result. So when I'm on tour with Peterson, uh, w the question that I think both of us get asked more than anything else is what are the best techniques to wake people up out of this sort of postmodern identity politics progressive groupthink? As a young person in the midst of this, have, what would you say are some techniques you've been able to use? Because it can't just be about drubbing them with facts, right? Well, I mean, the There's, left is doing a fantastic job with their just craziness, pushing people yeah. to the right. Like, so it's just doing, sort of stands they're still. They're doing it on themselves. Um, what, what we saw right now with Kanye in, in addition, it's just, he was simply saying, freedom of expression, freedom of thought, I support the president, our president has to be the freshest, the flyest, that was, <laughs> that was the greatest line. Um, just pushing people to diversity of thought and, and freedom of expression to think whatever you want. You shouldn't have, you shouldn't be held down by your skin color or, or, or your race or you know, your, your sexuality, like none of this matters. You should be able to think what you want and be able to say it without being tied down by you know, your identity. Yeah, how do you make sure that you don't get burned out? Because I think I remember the first communication we ever had, I think when either you followed me or I followed you on Twitter, I just sent you a quick one line note and I was just like, just don't get burned out. Because I saw you just, you were in the fight every day, you were, you were owning, owning the libs and all that. Which by the way, you know, you mentioned that Nikki Haley was at your summit. Yeah, she it's said It's like not she to. went, she went to, to, you know, in effect what is a, a, a lot of Trump people right, at this, at this event you put on, she goes there and she says, you know, don't make this about just owning the libs. Yeah. And she got applause for it, and I, I hit that same point, I think, the next day, because I think if you guys do exactly what you just laid out, just kind of stand there and be cool and be decent, you'll, you will welcome yeah, a lot of Yeah, decency wins. I think, I honestly believe that decency wins. Can we just take a second to say that yeah. Nikki Haley is fantastic, and I, I, yeah. I, I kind of cried for like a week <laughs> ever since she said that. Well, do you think that this is perhaps uh, paving the road for her running at some point? I don't know. There's so many 40 chess like theories. I just know. I just I know that she's just been doing a fantastic job. Yeah, and she's just one of the best. I know Nikki Haley, Ben Shapiro, 2024. Yeah, I mean, I'd probably have to be press secretary at that point. Uh, yeah, we'll that see. would work for like one horrific week, and then I. No, that'd be I'd, fine. I'd, you should do. <laughs> no, but all right. So give me give me some of the techniques when you see that it can't just be about standing still and and facts. Yeah. If you're if you're in a uh, conversation with a young person mm -hmm. that's really just bought into all of this. What are some of the techniques you use so to, the to first thing, Have you been successful? I, I suspect that you and have. Sometimes, yeah, I think I have. But the first thing you have to realize is that is this person looking to have an open discussion and actually wants, sorry about that. You're talking a lot these days, it's all right. I know, it's too much. <clears throat> or, or actually wants to develop their point of view. If they do, you have to treat it with decency and respect and not call them an idiot or something. You have to treat them like a, like a good human being should. Um, and then just have a rational conversation with them and see where they're coming from. Uh, and a lot of times I, I can immediately know what they're gonna respond to me. Like just straight off the bat, I know what they're gonna respond to me and, yeah. and I hit them with, with an initial, here's what you're gonna say, here's yeah. the reason, <laughs> and they're just shocked. Yeah. But then do you get them around? I mean, do, do you find, because it really, it's like sort of deprogramming somebody out of this. And yeah. I've, I've had some success at it, right? Yeah, I mean, a lot of them happened. watch my show now, so. Yeah, I mean, when I first started speaking out, kids would come up to me in school, and two things they would say. Be like, Kyle, I'm a conservative. So, so the thing about school was really interesting. I would get stare downs, and like, people would like, like, try to beat me up. So people would like, send me like, hey, Kyle, watch out, so-and-so is trying to beat you up. I was like, all right, man, go for it, okay? Yeah. <laughs> um, and people would give me stare downs, and there was such a villainization of being conservative, being a Second Amendment supporter. When I spoke up, I kind of opened the crack for people to say, oh, I agree with him. People would walk up to me and like hush up, like Kyle, thank you so much for doing. I'm just scared to speak out. And in addition, people would say, Kyle, I thought I was pro gun control and you spoke and I listened to you and then I did some more research and I agree with you. So that was great to see. And like that's just that's all I'm here for. So yeah. like to have people, you know, understand conservatism and understand the Second Amendment. It's got to be pretty weird that you guys are still in high school, right? Like yeah. now you're, you're celebrities in the most strange sense of celebrity. You are, and you're all still in high school together. What is that like? 
I mean, at the end of the day, we have to remember that we're kids. And I, I will explain it so, so you guys don't think I'm hypocritical. Um, when you're on TV and you're spouting politics, you're an adult. But in your private life, you're a kid, and we cannot forget that. So let's say, you know, when someone, some kid on the left does something that's stupid, it's, at the end of the day, they're a kid, and we have to address it as such. Um, but but it's, it's been a crazy whirlwind, and I think, thank God, I found a solid group of people who want the best for me that I can reach out, you know, just not for policy, but also, like, personal advice. Like, I, I, uh, I asked Ben, hey, how do you think I should approach college apps since I'm conservative, you know, and he helped me out. And it's just, it's so great to be able to reach out to people and have them, you know, give you advice from, like, look, 20 years older than me, and give me that advice that they had to go through. Yeah, what was that great tweet? So you're like number one in your class, right? Not like number one, you are number one in your class, yeah, is yeah, that yeah, correct? There yeah. was some tweet that you had about Dude, that. That was, that was you, awesome. Yeah, what, what was that? You so were ruining I, I somebody, right? I was ranked number one. Yeah. Um, and people got so angry, because, <laughs> so angry, and they're like, we're gonna boycott graduation, so I was like, yay, more cake. <laughs> it was great, uh, it was great. And then, you know, the, the next semester. But wait, what was the reason they wanted to boycott graduation? Because I was number one. Right, 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 right. And so then the semester updated, and then I was still number one. So I posted another tweet about that, and that also blew up. And I was like, we're going to get Ben Shapiro to come, Dana Lash is going to come. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be fantastic. Chris Cox was like, yeah, I'm going to be there. <laughs> but great. why would they want, I mean, is that really how sort of polarizingly crazy this has gotten yes. at, at a high school level? It, that just because they don't like, I mean, you're, you're number one, not by by it being ordained no. onto you, you're number one out of clearly a lot of hard work and smarts and all that. Yeah. You'd think that there would be certain respect for that <laughs> in some alternate it, it's universe. Sad that, it's sad that it, we, ha we are no longer able to be friends with people. Like, it's sad that people on the left think, so people on the left think that you're a Republican, therefore you're evil. And that's sad that you're not allowed to, to be friends with people who have different political viewpoints than you. Like, my best friend is a liberal. And I actually brought him to the Turning Point event. And after he was like, you know what, Kyle, some, uh, some people made some good points. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I told you. Yeah. But he's still a liberal. He's an old but school liberal. That's cool. He's probably a... We're getting there, you and him both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so wait, let's talk a little bit about college. Then. Okay. So you're, you're doing a great job in high school. Clearly now you've got a public profile. Grades are great. Seemingly you could get in to wherever you want to go and, not and do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you really think that that'll play a role in, in the schools that you're able to get into? Yeah, absolutely. It's sad to say, but, but there is a bias against conservatives, especially like the top tier schools. Like right now I'm looking to apply to Ivy's. It'll be great to get into Harvard or, or Columbia. Um, I really think- uh, Man, you'd be the reckoning of those places. I really, yeah, it'd be awesome. I really think that, it's, <laughs> I think it's really important to be accredited. Um, you know, I might, I've been thinking about Georgetown or GW to work on the Hill, I think that's great. Um, but you know, like, I, really, I really don't know what's next for me. I really don't know, it's go, go to college. I'm definitely gonna stay with Turning Point, it's a great organization. I'm still gonna be conservative, don't worry. I'm not gonna change. <laughs> I don't not say, gonna change generally me. people don't go the other way, right? You're not gonna suddenly grow up and be like, nah, nah, Hopefully. facts, no, 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 I'll no, go no. to the feelings things. That, that usually doesn't That won't happen. happen. Yeah, but all right, so you wanna go to school, but you, re so you really do think that your, your politics could affect, I guess, you know, they don't, well, what happened with David Hogg, right? He didn't get into to all, I don't know what his grades are, but like he didn't get into a whole bunch of schools, right? I mean, there have been rumors that he got into Harvard and Northeastern. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you want to study? you have any idea? It's either business or law. I really don't know yet. I just, you know, I, I've always like liked business, and I think law is just absolutely phenomenal. Really don't know yet. Uh, but you know, it, it's gonna be great to be on a college campus where you know everyone is just really liberal. That'll be fun. <laughs> it's sort of weird, and I guess this shows a little bit about the way the college experience is, is going, but in a bizarre way, just knowing you from the little bit that I know you, it's like, in a way, it's almost like you don't have to go to college. Like I'm you, definitely you, going to college. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm not saying you shouldn't, and I think there's all sorts of social reasons that somebody should go, and you can, you know, you learn in all sorts of other ways that aren't necessarily academic. But it's like clearly you've got the academic thing down and can keep learning that way. So it's you know it's bizarre that people spend you know twenty grand a year to go to college when 
No, it is. I you mean, know, the sad thing is... With you're surrounded by a lot of great minds, is what I'm saying. Thing, and, I'm and, with you, and, but the, the issue with college is that you're basically paying to get yourself brainwashed with stupidity. And that's the suck part, because there are actual, like, great things to learn in college, just not, like, lesbian dance theory. Like, Ben yeah. says that a lot. <laughs> just some of these classes are just useless. And, you know, and just it's just straight up complete stupidity, a lot of the stuff that they're teaching there. So what do you make of how this seems to be a through line through education, and I mean high school education, college education, clearly, the media, like all of the sort of brainwashing stuff that you're talking about, it's always going against people like you. And I see you on Twitter. You, you take down CNN all the time. You take down mainstream Dude, media all the so time. Fun. People know my thoughts on this. It's like, I just wish, like, to me, if these Can we just address that Twitter, just Twitter's for fun? We have to stop well, taking Twitter so seriously. Yeah, so what's like, your what? bio, yeah. your bio is perfect. Twitter is yeah. not real life. It's not real life, but pe But the weird thing about that is it's starting to leak into real life. I, I did a direct message, like, a year and a half ago or so about how online culture is becoming mainstream culture, and I think that that really is what's happening here. Twitter's not real life, but it's starting to, like, leak out into everyone's conversations. All Fox News and CNN and MSNBC are basically Trump's Twitter. Like, Twitter yeah. is, like, you know, like, have you seen shows where they basically read random replies to messages? It's like, John Smith 3.74 <laughs> responds to this like that. And it's yeah. just so stupid. But the biggest thing that we're seeing right now is, is a cultural shift with the youth. Like, memes, I'm saying memes, have so much power in memes our day matter. age. Memes won a lot. Memes helped so much for the Trump's 2016 campaign. Yeah, with it really did. Um, and social media has a huge influence on our beliefs and our actions, and that's why it is so scary to see censorship of conservatives online because that is basically like Twitter is basically the new version of you just like yelling into a crowd. Yeah, and that's basically like the main form of everyone's communication. And shutting that down is like heavily restricting, you know, I haven't developed my full opinion on this, but it seems as such restricting this restricts your, like really restricts your First Amendment right. Yeah, so this is the whole issue about whether they're publishers or platforms. Yeah, the big issue, is, I don't know if, if I'm saying this right, but I think one of the things is if there are certain, if there are, or if they're a publisher, for them, then like they have a lot of legal liability. If they're a platform, then every, every, everyone should say whatever they want, but that's not the case, so it's like pick one. Yeah. And they're just completely censoring uh, conservatives. Like I know PragerU gets like their videos demonetized so much. And have your videos gotten demonetized? They probably yeah, have. Yeah, well, I, now, now it's gotten a little bit better, but our videos just don't go out to feeds anymore. I went on that crazy- Yeah, they don't have algorithms. Saw, yeah, that crazy rampage I went on where I just started retweeting real people. I only did it with real people with real names saying they've been unsubscribed and they're getting hundreds and sometimes thousands of retweets and I'm tagging YouTube and they just ignore me. Yeah. And it's like, come on guys. You, yeah, I mean, you YouTube, play this YouTube game a little Google, bit Facebook, and Twitter all have proven biases. Proven. Yeah. How worried are, uh, well, so it's so interesting to me because you, you never, you didn't grow up in a time when there was some sort of trustworthy, seemingly trustworthy level of the media. Like CNN was not always this. The reason, I don't even know if you know this, but the, the reason I think that so many people like me that are older than you attack CNN the most is because CNN used to be decent. Like MSNBC is saying we lean left. Yeah, Fox CNN says they're unbiased. We, yeah, and CNN's saying that, and it's like, no, you're not. We, we know yeah, exactly you. what you're doing. And that's why I always attack CNN, because it's like you guys have actually become the worst in the name yeah, the, of Yeah, have you seen like, the ratings are like, oh, oh, you, you saw, saw the new ratings? Yeah. All of them are like the lowest. It's like a block of red CNN. Yeah. So here's what I think. I think that a lot of young people and like may, and average Americans do not trust the media anymore and they have sought out individuals instead. So they trust individuals. So they look to you, they look to Ben, they, they look to Guy Benson, you know, Charlie Kirk for, for their news because they trust the individual. Right? Do, do you see a, a great risk in that too? Because I'm worried about that. No, at some I level. also, but, but the thing is with that is that you have absolute liability for what you say. You know, CNN can, can like come whip something up or, you know, but when, when an individual like tweets something, it's on like they're responsible for their actions. Yeah. So one of the things I've been saying lately is that I'm actually in a bizarre way less interested in politics now than I've ever been, but I'm interested in what you referenced a little while ago, this culture. Thing. I mean, culture, what is it? Culture's, politics is downstream yeah. from culture. Yeah. And that's so true. Yeah, so do you see that really as, 
as sort of the future of all this, that it's not going to be about all of the little machinations of politics. It's just going to be about, I mean, this, I guess this is the strength of Trump. Well, well you'd argue it's either the strength or the, the, the worst part of Trump, I suppose. That he's a, cult that he's that he's like a cultural thing, not necessarily a political thing. No, I mean, there, there are pros and cons to that. But we just, we have to play by the rules that are set by society, and these are the rules. These are the rules that culture has a massive impact on society. And whether I like it or not, that Kanye is uh, well, Kanye speaking out, first of all, I think it's great that he's speaking out. It's his First Amendment right. I don't think we should be propping up opinions by celebrities simply because they're famous. You have to show that you are informed on the subject, and that's that. But it doesn't take a political genius to say that I believe in our Second Amendment and our First Amendment. That doesn't take, but Taylor Swift doing like a, a <laughs> 7,000 page right. essay, you know, that makes absolutely no sense and contradicts itself, written by like a liberal, you know, uh, worker on the Hill, that's... Yeah. I was disappointed in that just because I have no particular feelings about her one way or another. I don't care. I honestly I'm don't not know a fan that of I could mention one, I don't think I could name one song or whatever, but it's just like the fact that she stayed out of politics, I liked. I was like, oh, whatever she's doing or whatever her handlers are saying to her, I kind of like it. And then she got in on this and it's like, I don't care which way she was going to break. I was just like, ah, we just, this is not what we need. Yeah, I mean, the Taylor Swift effect, Preston is like down. Marsha Blackburn right. is up, so thanks Taylor Swift. Yeah. No, but, but what we saw right now by the left is that they are losing their stranglehold on culture. And that is very frightening for them. And we saw that with Kanye. When Kanye started speaking out, I gave my speech about this, and they started off with mob tactics. That didn't work. Uh, emotional appeal, the TMZ guy was basically begging him, like, Kanye, please, man, take, take off your hat, man. It hurts me emotionally. Yeah. He's like, no, it's my first amendment right. I'm not taking it off. And then we saw um, just blatant racism yeah. and vile character assassinations. And that, he's still you saw not, that CNN he, segment. It was disgusting. He yeah. wouldn't, that, that, that is, how does that fly? He wouldn't bow down to the mob. Absolutely wouldn't. But, but you know, they're losing their stranglehold on culture. And whether I like that we are putting so much emphasis on a cultural icon, those are the rules. Them the rules. Like that's, they say that on Twitter a lot. Them yeah, the yeah. rules. Um, but this is this is this is the reality that we're living in, and we have to understand that. And what's happening with Kanye is a real shift, especially for for African Americans and people who are like in Latinos. They're basically saying, I don't know why this is controversial. Blacks don't have to be Democrats. You don't own me. That's yeah, all they're saying. Basically, that's all he's saying. And he has created such a, like a pivotal moment that says, you, you're, you don't, your stranglehold doesn't affect me. Because I know in Hollywood, like the second you say something, like I remember someone said, Ben Shapiro's a nice guy. His career was destroyed. Yeah, Mark Duplass, who's a friend of mine Jeez. who's been on this show, and he had to issue an apology. And it's like, you know, oddly, what all, is the, the, world all the IDW in? people people came to his defense at first, they basically should. saying, you know, you should be allowed to say that. Yeah. And, then, and then unfortunately he issued and, that and black And black, especially young blacks are saying, look, they look up to Kanye West. They, millions look up to him. And they say, this individual, why does this individual think this way? And even more so, he didn't bow down to the mob, which is fantastic. And we're seeing like a real shift. I don't know, the 38% number were 38% African-American approval over Trump. I don't know if that's necessarily true. All I know is that there was a 3% jump from, there was, in August, the black approval rating of Trump was 3%. One of the la latest polls that I know, a month or so ago, was 10%. Mm -hmm. So there's a big jump. Uh, and, you know, we're seeing that so many young African-Americans are so energized. Like I know Turning Point is doing a black leadership summit in like a week in the White House. Mm -hmm. We're gonna get, uh, just 400 African-American young individuals to be able to speak there, to, to be able to listen and to see that the left is losing their stranglehold on culture and it is scary for them because that is the one thing that they have left. All right, I got two more for you. All right. You, are you in the prediction game at all? What do you think is gonna happen in these midterms we've got coming up? So what I've been hearing is that Republicans are gonna lose in the House and gain in the Senate. Uh, I love how Ocasio Cortez is. Uh, we're going to win back the executive these midterms. <laughs> I was like, two more years. She's but, uh, very confused about a lot. You're of close. Yeah. Uh, but look, the Kavanaugh effect is real. Yeah. Like this was like the all the left had to do was sit down, be quiet, be civil, play nice. They're like, no, no, this is we're not going to allow this, okay? And they hit themselves in the foot with the club, and then they started crying, and they did, th did the same thing with Kanye, and that was great. So the Kavanaugh really. V 
amped up and energized the conservative base. And even more so, it finally gave the conservative, like the conservatives, a backbone. Like Lindsey yeah. Graham, Lindsey Graham 2.0. Yeah. Where has this guy been? Yeah. I love it. And like Bill Cassidy, but but here's the here's the interesting thing. Women were the most angered by all of this. Before Kavanaugh in August, it was like a 35.7% approval of Trump. After it was a 40.7. And before in August, the um, Democrats had a 12-point lead over Republicans in a voter enthusiasm. Now it's 64% Republicans, 65 Democrats. So we are neck and neck in this, and it's all thanks to the Democrats. Yeah, I mean, my gut, as long as you're doing predictions here, I actually think the Republicans are gonna do well in both the House and the Senate. I really hope so, I um, really hope But I so. do think so, because I agree. I think this mob mentality and watching these videos of Antifa in Portland and Hillary saying we can't be civil and Eric Holder saying when they go we low, go low, we, kick, we them. kick them. And just, it's like, man, if you stand for due process and civil society and all of those things, that thing needs to burn. It, it kind of sucks, but it's like that, that set of ideas. The left? Should, thinks the, the, the left just completely disregards the Constitution. The Constitution was written, and, and f like the amendment, the Bill of Rights was forced by anti-federalists to make sure that the government could not become tyrannical and abuse its power. And this is so important, it's protecting the rights of the individuals, and these rights, why, why do we not all agree on them? Why is it wrong to believe in due process? Why is it wrong to say, I believe that individuals should have the right to defend themselves and also defend against the tyranny of a possible government. Like, the Second Amendment was basically written because the founders had just fought against Great Britain and they had seen how a tyrannical government quickly becomes. So one more thing I didn't know, the first thing tyrannical governments do is they take away the weapons of the civilians. We saw this in Nazi Germany, we saw this in, uh, in China, we saw this in, in Cambodia, that's the first thing they do. Uh, and the individual right to bear arms is, is, is every individual, it's not related to the militia clause. So it's basically saying every individual has the right to protect themselves and even more so, it's, it's necessary for the protection of a free state. All right, one more for you. Hit you me said you it. don't play video games as much no, anymore because you don't have time. What I do don't. you do for fun, man? What's fun, man? <laughs> <laughs> I used to Besides play... Twitter, you can't just tell me Twitter. I know you're having Twitter fun on fun. Twitter, but it can't just be Twitter. What are you doing for fun? So with me, I used to play a lot of video games. Yeah, like what I kind of used, games are you used playing? To, so here's, here's my progression. I haven't said this, but this is like a scoop. I used right, to play World of Tanks. Okay. And then moved to... to, to uh, Rocket League, okay, it sucks. It's a terrible game. It's boring. Then it moved to, so I played Overwatch, I played Paladins, I played PUBG, and then I played Fortnite. And Fortnite, this was when all the shooting occurred, and I just stopped dead in my tracks. Because it was just, it's a waste of time. And I see my younger brothers who are addicted to the game, and it's just sad to see that this is the state of our youth, that they're just completely addicted to technology. Like, I'm certain if I have kids, Okay, they're not seeing a phone until they're 12. You know what they do is to call me or 911. That's it. No video games. You're reading a book. I don't care. So what do you do for fun? You just I, you told me what you used to do for oh, okay. fun. Come on, you must be having fun somewhere. You're having fun sometimes. Wow, I got you. Yeah, man. You okay. did. No, but you're, you are having fun with this. I so can yeah, see I have I, I some, some of the re remaining friends that I have, uh, which are really solid friends. You know, on weekends we hang out. Uh, we go watch movies and stuff like that. In addition, I, I just think it's great. One of the greatest things for me for having fun is just simply talking to like-minded kids, like young individuals at these turning point events that we run, and it's great. And like meeting with and pushing policy and stuff like that, it's just fantastic. Like one of the greatest feelings ever was like passing the Stop School Violence Act and fix NICS. Like the Stop School Violence Act um, appropriated funds, $2 billion in funds, um, for the protection of schools, like hardening schools, metal detectors, uh, making better communication between law enforcement, training law enforcement, teachers and students. And in addition, there was a clause that said, none of this money will be used for firearm or firearm trainings. So this was like the greatest win for the left, uh -huh. and they still hated the bill. <laughs> and like the March for Alive kids hated it. But no, I mean, I'm really dead set on making sure that school shootings just are a thing of the past. They never happen again. Uh, you, you, and you love what you do, man. Yeah, man. It's obvious. Just, just like just learning about the Second Amendment and just like being more knowledgeable and having these debates and discussions are just like they really make my day. Yeah. Well, I think it goes without saying. I mean, I think you have an absurdly bright future. In Thank front you. Of you. Like, you gonna run for president or something? Probably not. But no, no, I mean, <laughs> But you left a little window. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, I little window. Maybe there's a thing um, for politics and like the hill in the future. Right now, I'm just dead set, going to college, getting my degree, learning, uh, staying in the political sphere. But, uh, you know, who knows? 
I'm see, definitely supporting Nikki Haley Shapiro 2024, though. <laughs> All right, you see, people, there is hope for the future. For more on Kyle, follow him on Twitter at Kyle Kashuv.